Hey, it's Tupac. I am back in True Remembrance, and this is the epilogue, so I guess technically the story already ended. But anyways, let's go with this. Last song was warm and sweet. I could feel it embracing me, sinking into my every pore, filling me up just like it had the first time in my apartment. But I couldn't give into it, not just yet. Oh, so this is back to the present, I guess. Yeah. I used my elbows to raise myself up off the ground. A splitting headache strong enough to shatter my head to pieces assaulted me the moment I tried to fight off the drowsiness. Don't push yourself. Please, I beg you. She said with an unsteady voice. I saw the way written all over her face, and I managed to smile. I guess you're right. This is a little much. She pursed her lips and whispered that she was sorry. Maybe it was the haze. Maybe it was the headache. But that moment, it looked like she was in even more pain than I was. You're resisting. No wonder it hurts. So please, sleep. Okay. Close your eyes, then I'll do as you say. I answered with a smile. Ma looked at me for a second, then she nodded. There was something more than a little weird about that. She had the upper hand by a long shot here. Why was she obeying? I ran my fingers down her cheeks. Then I drew near and kissed her. Her eyes fluttered open and suppressed for a second, but she did not resist me. I could see flecks of blood my blood on her cheeks now. I wiped those away gently. Once that was done, I said, I love you, La. She blinked. Once, twice, obviously she was shocked, but I had no idea whether she'd heard me. So I said it one more time, loudly, I love you. Just three little words, that was all but they were the hardest three words I'd ever said. I couldn't do anything more. That was okay though, because she'd hurt me this time. She was starting to blush furiously. I could tell she was trying to say something, but that she couldn't put it into words. So I just smiled and waited. I was prepared to wait forever. My head hurt as badly as ever, but that didn't matter anymore. I finally said what I'd set out to say. Black Iris, you're... Hmm? So cruel. She burst into tears. I just ran my fingers through her hair gently and waited. I could feel the headache leaving me already. When she finally looked back up at me, her f face was completely wet and her eyes were red. Law. Why did you try to erase my memory? In response, she stared down at the ground. Obviously, she was trying to figure out what to say. Her tears fell and splattered on the floor as I watched. Because you were in such pain, I thought. Because of me. Because of Pops. Because... Because Dexter told you so. She started to nod, but then shook her head frantically. He said that, but no, you're wrong. I chose to do it myself. And why would you do that? So you thought up, you, so you thought so little of me that you didn't care that I'd forget you. I said half jokingly, but I saw the hurt in her eyes when she glared back at me. Now she was crying, crying harder than ever. That's not true, and you know it. Well, fair enough. That bit, that was a bit much. She'd been cautioning me about that all month now. But what I said to you, it was horrible. You've been so hurt. You've been through so much. But I hurt you more. So I thought, you'd be happy to forget me. I thought, it's my duty to cure you. 
horrible. You said something horrible. Wait, what was that? I told you to get away from me. I smiled despite myself. Oh yeah, when she was with Anoye, right? Been shocked to hear that coming from her lips, all right. However, oh, la, you're wrong. I was hurt by the choice you made then, but that's something I could easily recover from. Because she'd chosen not to forget Anoye. Mar Maria had made the opposite choice. Because, to be honest, it made me happy. I'd never met anyone who decided to do it the hard way. Which was why my choice when it came had been simple. No way in hell was I going to forget her. And besides, I'd never agreed to have my memory erased. She opened her eyes when I said this. Clearly she couldn't believe me. I don't know what happened between the two of you, but I'd never asked Dust Dexter for this. The black suits had caught us at the church. After that, we were probably brought before Dexter and had our memories of the experience erased so that Law could work as an Omega and I could continue my work as an Alpha. And then we both arrived at that house on 8th, doomed to repeat the same mistakes our forgetful minds had committed over and over. I never asked to forget you. I never want to forget you. That's the honest to goodness truth. And I'd really appreciate it if you'd stop trying to erase my memory now, thank you. I said with a smile. But La, she slid forward against me, putting her arms around me as she wailed. I'll stop. I just held her in my arms. She kept crying. I was starting to get sleepy again, except this was just because I was so relieved. When I awoke, my memories would still be there, and so would La. Besides, I'd never known that it would feel so good to hold her in my arms. There was a soft, vulnerable smile on her face when we let go of each other. I heard her say goodnight to me, but drowsiness overtook me fast, and I was asleep before I could say anything to her. I think that might have ended. No, it didn't. Never mind. When I woke up, the first thing I saw was Law snuggled up right next to me, using my arm as her pillow. The next thing I saw was that she'd put a pillow under my head and draped a blanket over me. That was really nice of her. I also saw that she'd bandaged up my injured hand. I reached out and ran my fingers through her soft hair. She wriggled a little, and her eyes fluttered open. Sorry, did I wake you up? She shook her head no. When she realized exactly where she was, she blushed deeply and scrambled out of the blanket. I felt kind of cold now that she'd done that. Now I was regretting ever having woken her. I still felt kind of sluggish, so I just lay back for a while. But only for a while. I had things to do. The loose-leaf paper from Lala's binder was, were still scattered everywhere in the living room. I reached out for one of them. Only to find that Law was scampering about picking them all up. Written reports, right? Yeah, but still, it's embarrassing. And what are they about? Experimental notes, the erasure of a mnemonicized memory. I see. And that was understandable. No matter how deeply you search through the literature, you'd never find such so much of so much as a case report of this. It was a highly theoretical matter, not even thought possible by most. So I was a guinea pig. That didn't make me feel so good. Dexter wouldn't allow me, 
Oh, that's a lie. Oops. Dexter wouldn't allow me to erase your memory. But he did let me stay with you for a month. For this. She finished putting her papers back in her binder. When she turned back to me, there was embarrassment and a little bit of shame in her smile. Um, uh, good morning. Good morning. I could tell from her bashful reaction that yesterday hadn't been some kind of weird dream after all. And why, when I thought back on it, I felt just as bashful. Except La probably had no idea that I felt just as embarrassed as she did. It happened when you had a poker face like mine, I guess. Well, let's have some breakfast and leave this place. Wouldn't want Dexter's goons to find us here. I was a little worried that someone might be waiting for us outside. But if that were the case, they could have dragged us off yesterday night and nothing had happened. We're leaving this town, La. La nodded firmly in response. We packed our bags and left the house. I looked back. So much had happened there. It felt more like home than my apartment on 5th, as a matter of fact. La kept looking back at the house, even when we got to the grove of trees over and over again. She couldn't let go, and I completely understood. We walked down to 6th Street. It was still early. Most of the shops were closed. But a few were open, like Aroma, for instance. Oh, they're surprised. When we walked in, Rook looked up from the counter to see who it was and stared. Luggage? Dude, you planning on going somewhere? Yeah, I'm leaving this town. His mouth fell open so much that I was worried he'd dislocate his joints. Now this was funny, Rook being rendered speechless. So instead, after giving Jackal a pat on the head, Lips asked, With La. She sounded just as, as astonished as Rook did. She does not look at that. Look like she's astonished though. That's right. To which Lips bursts into peals of laughter. By this time, Rook had gotten a grip on himself, and he was beaming as well. Except he looked evil. Really? So you finally made your move, did ya? You? you big playboy, you. I'm proud of you, man. I wanted to tell him no, that he was totally wrong, but that would have caused more trouble than it was worth. Besides, in a way, he wasn't wrong at all. Feh. I never thought you'd beat me at the punch. Beat me to the punch. We've been thinking of leaving town too. We're thinking of setting up a cafe somewhere far from here. She said with a voice more full of happiness than I'd ever heard before. Jackal looked up at all of us, his tail wagging furiously. Please drop by, okay? Lips walked over to where La was and gave her a big hug. Jackal leaped up, tried, trying to look La in the face. La just laughed. It was such a clear, warm sound. Oh, of course. Thank you, Lips. And you, Jackal. And what about me, little lady? La and Lips both, both burst into laughter when they saw the mock forlorn look on Rook's face. Anyway, I take it you have some sort of plan. How are you going to get past the guards, anyway? Very carefully. And Dexter? Don't tell him anything, will you? Roger. We nodded at each other. This was it, then. Rook extended a hand to me. See you around, man. I took his hand and shook it firmly. We'll meet again. I know it. And then La and I left Aroma forever. From there we walked to 5th Street. I'd originally settled here on 5th Street because I'd liked the dark crisscrossing back alleys and the relative quiet. 
but the sun was still shining so hard today that there wasn't a single shadow to be found anywhere. We reached the old church and walked inside. And only A had taken his last breath, he breath here, surrounded by rust and decay and ruin in a world where nothing, not even this church, was sacred anymore. And yet he died in peace because La had been watching over him. This way. La led me down into the basement. And from there we'd take the tunnel out. Once we emerged, we'd be home free. But before we could go any further, we had heard a door opening behind us. We turned, and sure enough, it was Dexter. He had an empty smile on his face, and a gun in his hand. Just as I expected. You know, you guys and Professor Annalee, you're all too easy to figure out. Boring, really. Oh, what just happened? Okay. <laughs> I made sure Law was behind me, and then I took stock of the situation. I needed to put some serious distance between us and that gun. I'd like you to hand over that little lady there, please. That's not a command I can obey. Sorry. Law had been gripping my arm tightly, but now her grip loosened up. I could see her biting her lips. Clearly she wanted to say something, but... La, not a word. I'll get mad if you say anything weird now, okay? I wasn't leaving without her, no matter what she tried to say. But La gulped and nodded. Dexter took one step and then another towards us, and we matched his steps except backwards. Soon, though, we were pressed up against the podium. Dead end. Oh, please find that gun from forever ago where you chucked it and it fell in a crack. That'd be awesome. Dead end. What a shame. I'd hoped that would I hoped I wouldn't have to kill you. To arbitrarily erase someone's memory is the same thing as killing them. I glared at him furiously. But he just smiled and said That was for your sake, my good man. Come. Are you that dense? The world is full of sad things. You could, you can't possibly take them all in and expect to survive. His finger tightened on the trigger. I grabbed Law and dove for the floor. The gun went off. I could hear the bullet hitting the wall right above me. I hit the ground. Cold stone scraped against my cheek. And then I- Yes! Then I thrust my hand in the crack between the podium and the floor. I felt something cold and metallic. I knew what this was. I grabbed for it. And before he could do anything more, I pointed the gun at Dexter. But you know, there are some things you're better off remembering. Like this gun that Annalia had given me so long ago, for instance. Dexter slowly lowered his gun, but I kept mine pointed at him. So, aren't you going to shoot? You could probably kill me in an instant, you know. Dexter smiled wryly. I smiled right back. Perhaps, but if I did that, the person you gave the music box to would cry, wouldn't, wouldn't she now? Dexter blinked. He wasn't expecting this, obviously. But then he nodded quietly. Yes, she would. I lowered my gun and turned to La. She was looking up at me with great concern. I just smiled at her and urged her into the tunnel. Dexter holstered his gun, turned around, and started walking out of the church. I bowed deeply. Thank you for everything. I didn't think he heard me at first, but then before he disappeared out of the door and into the light, he raised one hand in valed valediction. He did not look back.
We made it. The sun was so bright, was so brilliant when we came out of the tunnel that I had to shield my eyes. Law took my arm and gently guided me into our new world. My back hurt from having to crawl through that small tunnel. I sighed and took a deep breath of the free air. It was fresh and clean. All right, where shall we go from here? I asked as I surveyed the rolling hills and forests all around us. Ma thought about this for a moment. She didn't have to think long, though. I want to see the mountains and the ocean. The ocean and the mountains ten generally tend to be in the opposite direction, silly. You should pick one for now, okay? I replied with a smile, but obviously La wasn't as amused. Her glare vanished in a matter of seconds, though. She'd gotten as used to getting teased by me as I'd gotten used to teasing her. Anyway, it doesn't matter. For now, let's go. We walked for a long time. When we got to the top of an especially large hill, we turned around. Our city, the city, shone radiantly in the brilliant morning light. A large city, a clean city, a city where people came to be healed, a city where memories came to die. I turned to La, only to find that she was also looking down on the city. Tears were running down her cheeks and being carried away by the gentle breeze. La. Hmm? Oh, don't mind me. It's not because I'm sad. She dried her tears, and she smiled just for me. It's because I'm happy, Black Iris. That let there be no more talk of tears, or of psychic corrosion, or of the dolor. For her, it will all be over soon. Then from the ashes of the past, there will be new memories, inked by one... I d uh. And on that day I will put down the mantle of the Nemonicide at last, for I will too be too full with joy and tears, as it is written in Alien's books. So take my hand, let's make ourselves some memories to last, and embrace everything, all the joy and pain. Walk with me. Okay, I finished that one fast, I guess. Our time is now, and this is our story. I really like that. That was a good original storyline. Oh, and it's got an ending animation. Even better. Oh, and a song. So, I think right now it's showing, like, on the side, all of the, like, original pictures. I don't remember this one.
And there it goes. True Remembrance. I recommend playing it. Even though you probably watched just about all of it. Um, just, I might play it again just to see, like, all of the hints that Law gave when she was, um, narrating, I guess. But anyways, this was a fun, fun game. Will you return to the title menu? Oh, I guess that is the end. Okay. Uh, sure. True Remembrance. That was a great visual novel. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you next time.